Our next speaker is uh, Rob Lafrenay, and he is the curator of the Arts Catalyst, uh, which is an arts and science agency based in London, and they are experts in all these matters. They've been working on this like for almost 20 years, 19 years to be precise. And uh, yeah, Rob curated a, a very big exhibition uh, Last, uh, yeah, last year, in, in fact, uh, in Liverpool, which was called uh, The Republic of the Moon, which is a, a, a perspective of how we are going to inhabit the, the moon. So he's going to tell us more about his work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Yes, hello, I'm Rob Lafrani. Thank you very much, Naum. Uh, Naam is basically uh, our associate curator. He's organizing these Cosmicas everywhere, which are becoming more and more international. There's another one on Yuri's night. <laughs> Yuri. <laughs> um, and uh, that's going to be uh, at Z33 in Hasselt, uh, Belgium, as part of um, a, an exhibition called Space Odyssey 2. I think that's what the name of it is. And um, yeah, so April the 12th, I think Chris Welch, who is on our board of directors and also employed by the ISU, is going to talk, uh, in, give us an impromptu uh, a briefing on Yuri and his night. Okay, let's just start. Well, now, can you set me up? Yes. That's great. If you set me up, I'll start. A little straw poll. How many people here um, consider themselves as working in the arts and cultural side of things, artists and cultural people. Okay, <laughs> that's about just under half. And how many people are working in the space industry, in the space exploration industry? Okay, not so many people. And how many people are working in both? <laughs> ah, Roger Molina! <laughs> the prize is yours. <laughs> okay, just to give, give, give a sense of the kind of people who, 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 who come to, to Cosmica. And as um, Noam pointed out, that uh, we're having a, a, a meeting at the IAF, uh, International Astronautical Federation, uh, spring meeting, which happens here in Paris, and we're going to be t talking about cultural, cultural matters in space. And Roger, who will be talking later, is, is a great pioneer in kind of easing this cultural agenda into the uh, space industry. Hostile extreme environment. Yes. Hostile extreme, <laughs> <laughs> extreme environments. Um, so, oh, extreme environments. So um, this is White Sands Desert, uh, actually, and Roger was telling me earlier on about, um, I hadn't quite realized that this was the place that Roger's father was launching the, uh, corporal, uh, the corporal rocket. Yeah, um, so I was in this place, in this vehicle, um, last year at um, the International Symposium of Electronic Arts. I went to meet these uh, two Mexican artists um, called um, Ivan Puig and uh, Andres Padilla Nomene. And we've really been doing a lot of stuff in Mexico lately. And in fact, the last um, Cosmica was in Mexico City. Is that right? Have we had one since now? Yeah, well, no. it's, yeah, no, the last one was in London. In London, okay, but in, in Mexico City. So I have to uh, uh, come up with a confession, and I'm going to show you the same slideshow as I showed you in uh, Mexico City, but my talks are always different. <laughs> I have actually labeled this one as Cosmic of Paris. Okay, so why am I showing you White Sands Desert? This is the SEFT, which is kind of like a Back to the Future space vehicle. They actually call it a space vehicle. But it's actually not for exploring space. It's for exploring the highways and byways of the world, the post-industrial in a funny sense world, because they, they're using this vehicle, as you see at the front, there, there's an apparatus for um, lowering what are railway wheels. Now, in um, 1995, the Mexican uh, railway system was uh, privatized. And as a result, within one year, um, the entire passenger network had closed down and gone to freight. Um, so they're using this vehicle to explore the Mexican railway system, to kind of uh, 
find what it did to communities who lost their railways. And I think actually this is very relevant to our discussions about space, space exploration in the future, the way, infras the way artists and the way we can start analysing um, big infrastructures, the way big infrastructures affect all of our lives. And I think sooner or later the space industry will be a big infrastructure that affects all of our lives. So I think part of the role of Ithacus and part of the role of the way artists, storytellers, people in, who have decided to engage in the space industry in this way is part of what we would call the democratization of, of, of space. To, to open up what would seem to be, you know, the closed doors of the space industry to, 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 to ordinary people, people who are interested in the future of humanity. So that's the sort of uh, political bit. And um, the artist, well, uh, the, 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 um, the, the Ceph vehicle, we're actually going to be showing in the UK along with um, this person who's actually in the audience tonight. Um, who is uh, riding an autonomous railway vehicle in the streets of Istanbul. And to give an example of the sort of thing we do, as well as the space stuff, uh, this is their um, emblem vehicle, which uh, they ran in, uh, on the world's um, first passenger railway line between Liverpool and Manchester last year. So I'm talking about autonomy, I'm talking about the way in which artists can look at big infrastructures and bring them to a human scale. So that's why I'm starting with these images. But let's look at the moon, and because my talk is really about our, 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 our project, the Republic of the Moon. This is not the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a beach in Holland. Actually, very interestingly, it's uh, near, not so far away from Nordvik, uh, where the, uh, the ESTEC, the European Space Agency Technical Centre is. And this um, project was done by an artist called Alexandra Mir, called The First Woman on the Moon. And she did this project uh, in, I have to get my dates right here, but she did it uh, 20 years after Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, and um, decided as a gesture to declare herself the first woman on the moon. <laughs> and um, interestingly, she, she had, before his death, she was involved in quite a long correspondence with Neil Armstrong between the first woman and the first man. And that became quite of an interesting artistic project that, 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 that went on in the background. And we, um, we did a project, uh, a big exhibition in uh, the old, again, strange crossover between railways and space exploration in. Uh, an engine shed in Camden Town uh, called the Roundhouse. Um, inspired by the rocket graveyard in Houston, um, Alexandra Mir decided to build, she wanted to build a rocket, a rocket that was going nowhere, called, um, and this piece was called Gravity. If you see the, 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 the artist down there, you can see how, how big that actually was. And in a very, very strange set of detournement, we invited the uh, astronaut and artist, Alan Bean, to come and uh, give a, a talk at, uh, alongside this exhibition in, in a conference. And um, he, uh, lunar astronauts kind of attract a lot of people, mainly who want autographs. And he actually sat at the base of this rocket signing autographs for two hours. So that made it into a sort of another kind of weird process piece. But now I'm going to turn to the front cover of Leonardo a few years ago. I don't know when this appeared, Roger. This was what it was the front. It was a front cover. Yes. Yeah. This is a work by Lilian Lin, which I'm actually reliably informed. Um, I think it appeared about 16 or 17 years ago on the front cover of Leonardo, and caused quite a fuss because uh, a number of astronomers actually thought she really was going to project a start projecting on the moon like this. And of course, this is technically not possible. However, I'm informed that on a smaller scale, it is now possible to, to, to do this. So this is a project that we presented as part of our Republic of the Moon. Now, the Republic of the Moon was really, funnily enough, the title came out of an early meeting of Ithacus. Um, 
We, we were talking about what Iticus could actually achieve, what the scope of Iticus would be. And, um, and, and at one point, one of the, the early delegates to Iticus, um, I think he was somebody who was part of COPUS, the, uh, uh, the, the United Nations um, Committee on the, Pub on the Peaceful Uses of Space, we were in the middle of talking about space law. Could space law be a subject for Iticus? And he said, listen, if we start, you know, talking about this, we go open a whole can of worms. I mean, no one wants to see a Republic of the Moon. And I thought, that is such a great title for an exhibition. <laughs> so we did this exhibition, Republic of the Moon, about how it is to live on the moon. I mean, this is an artist's example of what it might be like to live on the moon. But uh, we have the analog. This is the Mars Desert Research Station, which we were, we were looking at lots of ideas about how we would do this. And this, I think he, most people know about this, uh, the Mars 500 uh, experiment that took place in Moscow. Again, a very sort of dystopic vision of how you would run an analog. Uh, these guys were basically in the sauna for quite a long time. <laughs> So maybe we should be thinking, looking at examples like this about how we live on the moon. This is Christiana, the utopian kind of autonomous community in, in Copenhagen. Or this, the Macrolab, which was an art science um, uh, environment which we, uh, which we were part of in Scotland, Marco Pelkins Macrolab. Um, or this, uh, the Indian artist Ashok Sukumaran, who uh, got this... Uh, Mo this static mobile home we see it in the streets is that actually it being brought into two the gallery. Of them right here, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we have two of them right here, and then we had it in the gallery, and it literally moves across the gallery. People could go inside it, and uh, and it's kind of like thinking about the mobile home as a, 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 a as an analog. Uh, the, these artists, Bruce Gilchrist and, and uh, Jay Johnson, part of London Fieldworks, who've created a project called Outlandia, first artist's uh, residence on the, the, um, in the treehouse um, opposite Ben Nevis. So looking at all these other models of how we might live in space, Thomas Saracino's work. Oh, sorry. Well, that's how Thomas shows his work. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, poetic cosmos of the breath, uh, which is inspired by the architect Dominic Michaelis, who still lives in the south of France. Um, other projects by Saracino. Um, and um, so I'm passing on now to one of the major artistic projects which we, we showed in Republic of the Moon, which is by Agnes Mayer Brandis. This actually is an interesting, I, I showed this because I, I really love this, this, this picture. This is Marston. She actually went and was hosted by Marston for the, uh, a, a, a couple of weeks in the Mojave Desert and um, this amazing hovering rocket which literally goes up and down. She, 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 I'm not going to show you the video of it now, but she's. Uh, I, I'm just going to go through. The, I won't talk about the parabolic flights because we showed you. I showed you a video earlier on our artist air show. Um, this is the first chair space. One things we we've done. Not quite space. Not quite space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> suborbital space. Not even suborbital space. Thirty thousand kilometers. Uh, N55 autonomous. Uh, okay, so I'm going to come on to Agnes Mayer Brandis, who I'm going to talk, spend the rest of my talk speaking about, who was kind of like the artist in Republic of the Moon, who I feel kind of um, addressed the whole subject in, in the, the most encapsulated way, the best way. Um, she has done a very complicated and long project. Um, connected with the world's first science fiction novel, um, which is um, The Man in the Moon, with an E on the end, by... Um, um, no, Goodwin. Sorry? Goodwin. Francis Goodwin, yeah. Um, and um, in, in The Man in the Moon, um, written in the uh, 16th century, the protagonist is towed to the moon by um, some geese. At that point, um, I actually only heard this the other day, that apparently at that point in history people actually thought there was atmosphere between here and the moon. 
Um, that, 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 that's why they felt that it was possible to fly birds to the moon. And I hadn't quite realized that. It's so a historian of science uh, wrote, wrote, wrote this recently. I can't remember the reference, but apparently people didn't know that the atmosphere ended where it ended in the 16th century. So it seems quite feasible to imagine that you could, in fact, fly to the moon as a bird. You know, Agnes Mayer Brandis, in the project uh, that she did in the Polinaria in, in Italy, um, decided to raise a flock of geese, which, uh, while they were still in the eggs, uh, she named after well-known astronauts. This is uh, Neil Armstrong there. Uh, and there's uh, uh, a, a number of other... That's it. So Neil actually... That's uh, Yuri Gagarin being born. And here they are as chicks. So, Lars uh, Aldrin, Neil, Svetlana, Valentina Tereshkova, Rakesh Sharma, various important people in, 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 in space flight. Um, and the idea was that she was going to recreate uh, the Francis Goodwin uh, book in reality and train the geese. I'm going to show you a short video about what she did, but she, in reality, hand reared these geese in the incubator you saw before and um, became the goose mother. So she, in the, Lorenz, in the style of Conrad de Lorenz, she imprinted the geese on herself. And then, as they grew up, trained them. This is her on a V formation bike, training them to fly. And this is real. This is not, this is not a, while the artist uses a lot of humor, this is real. The geese exist. They're in, in Italy right now. They're actually, uh, there's a new generation of geese being born. Uh, various trading procedures. Okay, so I'm going to show you a quick video which explains a bit more about the moon geese. How long have I got her now? Am I yeah. completely over my time yet? Uh, within reason. Within reason. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Um, let's uh, have this one. And so this is, I'm just going to show you a short extract from a documentary which was made about this project. The Man in the Moon, written by English Bishop Francis Godwin in 1602 describes the journey of Domingo Gonzalez, who flies to the moon in a chariot towed by moon geese. Moon geese are migration birds that annually travel between Earth and moon. What happened to the moon geese in the 21st century? Does this very special species still exist? And if so, do they still know about their migration pattern or have they been stranded? flights between Earth and Moon. To effectively do so, the geese need to be imprinted. Imprinting describes a psychological and behavioral process that happens through direct contact in the first phase of a young animal's life. Imprinted animals accept the imprinters as their parents. Successful imprinters are not only able to teach the goslings where to sleep and to walk, what to eat, but also to fly, where to fly and how to get there. Levy. <laughs> After 
After nine months of strenuous but successful training, we are back to the MGC home base, ready to start the next stage of the experiment. Sandra Smolieski became the first people, the first men, to walk on the Martian surface. And even though it is a simulation, this is quite an important experiment for space travel. And An analog is a location that simulates extraterrestrial conditions on Earth for training and test purposes. It builds the first essential step to test, train and prepare birds and other species for the daring psychological and physical conditions of space travel. A lunar habitat and landscape containing the experiment is installed and movies are now living and working there for the next several months. to show the, the Republic of the Moon in London, and one of the things we're very interested in is kind of expanding the notions of the Moon or the way the public see the Moon um, beyond the notion of landing on the Moon, but also we're very interested in, for example, having some contributions from um, space agencies other than the main space agencies, such as the Indian Space Research Organization, who 
and with a very, you know, as people from the space industry know, know uh, with a very small budget launched the Tran Chandrayaan uh, vehicle, which is which orbited the moon, and uh, I think they're launching Chandrayaan two, and also uh, developing the human spaceflight program. So one of the things, one of the other agendas which we didn't achieve in the first iteration of Republic of the Moon is to try and look into the role of of, of, of the smaller. Uh, uh, the, the newly f developing space agencies in, 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 in different countries in the world. And um, so, goodbye with that. Thank you.